Hello there Vaulting Modular people, Pooh Bear here and welcome to my channel. And today is one of my fun days because I get to play with my modules and build something new with them. And what my plan is today is to build a linear drum pattern and I'm going to be using my control pad, an on-change trigger, an auto sense, a preset digital stepper remote, a preset voltage stepper remote, and an auto sense digital select. These are all part of the new Pooh Bear bundle. And I'm also going to be using a, the drum sequencer here and this uh, drum module by Planet Six over here was actually quite a bit of fun. Um, so first of all, I'm also going to be doing what I call an old school thing, because I used to program the Commodore 64 way, 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 way back in the 80s. And one of the issues with the sound of the Commodore was, was it was only limited to three voices. You got so much out of it in them three voices. But one of the tricks we used to do is we used to take one of the voices and we'll actually reprogram it on the fly, getting it to do different sounds. So it sounds like you had a lot more coming out of it. And that's hopefully what we're going to try and achieve today. And I can't see why it, this should not work. It's solid theory, so this should actually work. I'm not gonna go and be going into mega, mega depth of the modules. I will be talking about certain little things. I have done individual videos on all the sort of modules, so you can obviously look at them if you need to find out a bit more information. So first things first, oh, and also, this is actually wired off to a mixer, which I've got a couple of little effects uh, set up against it. So uh, let's actually hear a sound straight away. So to hear a sound, I can actually use this control pad straight into here. It's not the most advisable thing to actually do, because you can see I'm clicking around and nothing's happening. But if I click the same button, and keep on clicking the same button, it's actually going to work. So the better way of doing it would be to go through my change control trigger. So now, it doesn't matter if I click the same button or click a different button. What I'm also gonna do with this um, control pad, I'm gonna take a link out and put it into my auto sense, and then for my auto sense, I'm gonna actually put it into this preset digital stepper, and I'm gonna link these two up together as well. So now what's gonna happen is, I'm gonna press a, a button on my control pad, it's gonna select a new preset, it's gonna send out all the control voltages, it's gonna change the, the preset, what was set on this drum machine, and we should be able to trigger it and hear it as well. So let's, there we go. Here's another one. And as you can hear, I've got many different little things set and a few funny ones as well. Oh, don't even know what I've got in there. But there you go. So that's a basic setup here. So as I say, this is just sending out a quick trigger, which is obviously firing that off. I'm then also using this auto sense. You see why I'd be using this auto sense in a minute. And in fact, I'll tell you what I want to do. I want to just control this terminal cables on so you can see everything what's going on. Um, yeah, you see why I'm, I, I've wired this auto sense up is because when I start to bring other stuff in, it means I don't have to swap wires around and I can always keep coming back to this control pad. So very, very quickly, one thing um, what we can do with, especially with this module and with these, is we've got some times, we can set some times on these. So I'm gonna just crank up the times. And the reason I'm gonna crank up these times is I'm just gonna just demo the use of a, say, a global freeze local copy. So I'm actually gonna very, very quickly just, I don't know, just, just need a something. I just need something to trigger <laughs> this. So this, if I turn this on, cool. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to select 24, which I believe is happens to be blank, but because I've got a time set up, it's going to morph to it. I've now paused it. I'm gonna let it go. I'm not gonna let it go. Oh. And what I'm looking for, I'm, I'm, I'm basically I'm looking for some new sounds, and I've actually hit another patch now. I like that sound there, so I'm gonna, that sound there, I'm not gonna change anything any, anything else, it's, you can hear it carrying on. So I'm gonna choose an empty patch. Let's just put these down to zero seconds. So here's my empty patch, I know it's empty because it's virtually saying zeros on it. Um, you may look at this side and go, these aren't saying zeros. If you actually click on the remote off, you'd actually see that what their values is internally. We're actually having to be looking at the values which is set by the actual device itself. So on the device, when it's turned down, that would be saying like minus 25, I suppose if I hover over it, hopefully 
it should be coming up. So it's come up at 25, but um, that's how it's, it's represented itself. So now I've got that, uh, I've copied that stuff, I need to paste it. So I'm just gonna do a local paste. So there's that and that one. I'm gonna save that. And I've now got just created myself a new sound really, really quickly. As I say, I can whack this stuff back up again and then hit on another button. That one will do me. So as 25 happens to be an empty one, I'm just gonna straight away paste it in and save them changes. It doesn't even matter if it's not caught up because I'm saving, these are the parameters I'm saving, so it doesn't matter if these are still moving and it's still playing catch up. So I'm just gonna turn, if you want this to catch up really, really quickly, you can just go from uh, change the intervals. When you change the intervals, it automatically speeds this up as quick as it can because it doesn't know where it is in the, the morphing, so it jumps to the target. So there we go, we've got ourselves a few different sounds going on. So this is where the fun bit's gonna come in. So as, as we go through this, you can hear we've got ourselves some interesting sounds. So what we're gonna do now is build ourselves a linear drum pattern. Now a linear drum pattern, um, to me, might mean something different to other people, but to me what a linear drum pattern means is, like if I've got these four lanes, no lane is going to overlap the other one. So let's first of all sort of try and come up maybe with something like a, a bit of a kick. And I think that's a bit of a kick sound, wasn't it? There we go, we've got ourselves a bit of a kick sound. Then if I was to go on to the second one, then let's, well, obviously, I want something a bit more. I don't know, we'll have to make it up and I'll, and I'll change it in a minute. And then thirdly, I will have that ding ding sound. So I'm gonna try and fill in some of the gaps here. And again, I'll probably come back and play around with this or something. In fact, I'm gonna, I might leave that one because I've got an idea there. And the idea I was thinking of doing is, I was thinking of, if I highlight that one there, I think there's another. Yeah, I think I can hear what's gonna happen. So obviously we've got ourselves a pattern, but we're only hearing sort of one sound at a time. And this is where the auto sense digital select is gonna come in. So let me just turn this off a second. So hey, we're gonna make that quiet. So first of all, I'm gonna send all the triggers from this drum sequencer over to the drum module. So they're all gonna be triggered over there. I'm also gonna be taking these triggers and I'm gonna feed it into my AutoSense. Now, let's be honest, because of the way this is set up, it shouldn't matter how I wire this up, but me being me, I am gonna wire it up in a, a, this particular way. Top one has the highest priority, so to me, the kick is always going to have the highest priority. Then I think I think the snare should be a, a high priority, then the next sound, and then the next sound. So I kind of wired it up in reverse. But to be honest, because of the way these gates are open and closing, it doesn't matter. It's the same we've got this ignore zero. So because this gate will be closed before this one's fired off, so on and so forth, it shouldn't be an issue, but I am actually going to turn ignore zero on. So when this gate closes, it's just going to ignore it. It's only looking for new gates for it to start. So the first one happened to be zero. Then the snare is on number two. So I'm gonna put this onto number two. There we go, got that on number two. The, the, the next pattern was uh, number one, and I believe it is number six. Yeah, that's the sound I want. Let's put that onto number six. Then I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna put it into that auto sense. So obviously I can play around listening to some sounds. But now, fingers crossed, we're gonna hit play. This is gonna handle <laughs> the changing of the drum pattern and hopefully we're gonna get ourselves something at the other end. And it's not because we haven't got the out turned on. <laughs> so let's just turn this out on. And I'm gonna turn this down, let's turn the BPM down.
now, as you can see, that's what we can do, is have a little play around with this now. But I think you get the idea. So as I say, so this gate is obviously firing in and selecting its appropriate um, digital number. The digital number itself in turn is obviously being fired out and changing the preset digital stepper remote, um, which obviously in turn, in fact, I am going via my auto um, sense, which in turn obviously is then changing the parameters on the drum machine. So all quite straightforward to start with. So this is where I think I can do this and I'm pretty sure we can do this, just to, like we could, we've done this. I'm now going to replace a couple of things and I'm going to use a, a uh, one of my steppers in place of my drum machine to control the drum pattern. Yeah, it sounds right. It sound it all sounds right to me. But let's have, let's have a quick look in a second. So, first thing I'm actually going to pull myself up as well is um, I'm going to need a way to drive this. So I'm going to grab myself at the store and forward because I love my store and forwards. There we go. We've got ourselves a store and forward. Um, what I could even do to start with. Um, with this storing forward, I could take the gate out and put it into the clock in and drive. Can I, will this drive this from this? Oh, my brain is just not working. Let's have a try. Okay, let's speed it up. And the reason I think of driving it from this, because we can play around with the swing. Really messing around with the set. Ah, oh, here it goes. That. That's a good way. That works nicely. I like that. Just quieting that down. Obviously, I could stop it there. I could stop it there. I could stop it in multiple places. Oh, it's all going to get confusing. Okay, so uh, just by using my simple storing forward, which is obviously from the Pooh Bear Bundle 1, uh, we can play around with the swingers, and you could hear, I think that drum pattern is actually sounding <laughs> actually quite reasonable uh, with a little bit of a swing on it. So let's see what we're going to do next. This is where things are going to start getting confusing. I am definitely going to need a, I'm going to want a preset digital stepper um, and I'm going to want a voltage one actually. I don't want a, another one, I just want a voltage one. So I should be able to find that in here. So I want my digital stepper normal. Bam, let's put it over there. Let's drag it over a second. So here we go. And I'm actually going to put this onto a one volt range because this is a one volt input. I can take this uh, output here and I can put this also into my also auto sense because as soon as I make a change uh, down here, I am now obviously selecting and controlling what's actually happening up here. Uh, the other thing I need to decide to do is what step number do I wish to start this on because obviously at the moment, um, I can start it on a zero, I can start it on one, I can start it anyway, to be perfectly honest. But I'm going to say to myself, I'm going to start it on one, and the only reason I'm going to start it on one, is I'll just put that to one, is so it's in line with this. So this is obviously lane one, lane two, lane, you know, lane or column one, column two, column three. So if I can make, put it in line with that, that'd be great. So obviously step one is quite straightforward, it's going to be a zero, because that's our first lane, that's a zero. So it's that number there. So basically that's all we're going to be doing. So in step two, was, was on the third lane up, which happened to be this one down here, which was number one. So I now just need to change that to a number one. And then we go to number three. Oh, and also along the way, remember to click save. So now I'm on step three, because the, each step is individual. So all these settings are individual. So you have to save it for each one. Now we're going down to a two. So there's our two. So I'm going to populate that up and save that. And then I'm going to say with the magical video, we can actually absolutely speed everything up. So with the power of video, I've actually now removed the drum sequence. I've also removed my AutoSense digital um, select. Um, so within this um, preset digital stepper, when we scroll through it, I've got all my little drum sort of things set up, what I'm hoping it's going to play. I've actually gone over the 16 steps. I've actually gone up to 24, because I'm gonna try a little experiment, again, which should work, no problems at all. 
So what I need to do, as you can see, this is already wired, so that should all be ready to go. So as so I say, as this steps through, it's changing that, so that's fantastic. But I've got no way to drive this yet. Yes, I've got my story forward, brilliant. Um, oh, there's another new one, is I've, I've brought up a little project runtime. <laughs> um, I've only just put pulled this in, just so we've got these um, uh, transport controls here, which we could actually use if we wish to. It comes in handy for resetting a number of the devices, I think. Um, so I've got my flip-flop counter, which is going to do a bit of a count. So if you think about it, um, I said straight away, we've got 16 steps to deal with. So if I was to, say, get hold of this um, flip-flop counter and, and move it up to, say, something like 16 steps, I can take this out and put that into that in. Um, I need to drive this, so that can be driven from my store in Ford. And so very, very quickly, let's just turn this on. So we've got that driving, that's driving, that's coming through, that's coming through, that's coming through. So that's all right to start with, but obviously we've got nothing actually triggering the drum machine itself. But again, there's no problem with that because I can take a, a, a feed straight from my store and forward. Swing sounds a little bit out there, so let's push the swing the other way around. So it's sounding exactly the same, and obviously I haven't got a drum machine now, and I've got um, this stepper in place of it, which is obviously going through and doing the steps. I'm using my storing forward, I'm using the trigger out of that to actually trigger the drum machine itself. And obviously the flip-flop counter, so effectively, I'm putting a trigger into this, and as this is counting up, that is what's now driving my preset stepper. So there's, there's another way of driving a preset stepper by just using a trigger. So, you know, we're not even giving it uh, you know, a direct current, we're giving it a trigger, which is then coming from my flip-flop counter. Now, as I said, I actually got um, 24 steps into here. So obviously I can push this threshold up to 24. But what I'm thinking of playing around with or doing, and I'm just trying to get my head <laughs> I'm, I'm doing this on the fly, so I'm, I'm thinking aloud. So what I need to try and do is get this flip-flop counter to change this one between the thresholds of 16 to 24. So I'm going to get it to play, say three or four times through of the 16 and then put on the 24 at the end. I Or maybe I might go for three steps, but let's just go for four to start with and see how we're gonna do it. So I need to play with this threshold, that's fair enough. So I'm gonna take that and get that driven by this flip-flop counter. So I need a way of driving um, 16 into here. So I need the equivalent of 16. So obviously I've got this up here and I can obviously put that into there if I wanted to and push that onto 16. And as long as that's, uh, let's have a look. So I'm on my flop at the moment. So if I quickly switch that around to a flip, you can see it's actually gone to 16. Okay, that's cool. Um, and I also need to go to 24. Well, there is actually a 24 up here as well. So just by clicking on 24, I've got there. But I need to be able to flip flop between them. And that's, that's where it becomes a little bit more interesting or fun. So theoretically, if I was to put that onto an eight, and in fact, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dewire everything. So it, it might make it a little bit plainer to see. So I need two lots of eight. So I'm gonna hold my control key down and click on the out. And then I'm gonna come over to this A over here and I'm gonna click on it twice, once, two. So I put two lots of eight in there to make 16. And on B, I'm gonna click it three times. So if I was to open this up, you can see I've got three wires coming out of here. And on this one, I should have two wires coming out. So two eights are 16, three eights are 24. So if I was to put that onto, uh, that needs to go to an off. This is gonna to go to an off. So when it's in the flip mode, that's off. But when it's in the flop mode, that's what I want. So then B is now driving into here, which is correct. So I can see my 24. And then when it flips around, we need to go, go around the other side. Now, I want to drive this. So I think the best thing way of me driving this would be from this one here. And um, what I'm gonna do is I need to get a trigger through. So I'm gonna take a five volt signal into here. So I don't want it doing nothing. I'm gonna to have to play around with this until I get this sort of right. I'm just gonna turn these off as well. 
so don't need that on, I don't need that on. So when it's in the flop mode, I'm gonna take a signal and drive this device here. I'm just gonna take this reset and put the reset on the, let's put the resets on the stop. So when I stop it, everything gets reset. So theoretically, if I click stop, I can reset my counters. So what's gonna happen now is this is actually gonna drive through. When it gets right to the end, it's going to put a signal trigger through there. And it might be that I should have to, I might have to turn this to an after because it might be triggering too soon. And, uh, oh, look, we've got an on off here, so I can actually do, it should be that one there, that one there. <laughs> so this one here is gonna trigger when I click start, and then when I click stop, it'll also trigger as well. So let's see what's gonna happen here. So you can see it's counted up to 16, we've got to two. Not bad, Is we're looking good. And it flipped it over, but I think it went a bit early than I wanted. Two, three. Ah, that's all right. I suppose I've got two choices there. I, I could turn this threshold up to a five. But saying that, I think that was sounding okay on a four. Excellent, and hopefully when we hit stop over here, we can actually stop it. So I don't know if you followed that or not. You can do quite complex things with these flip-flop counters, and that's exactly what I've done here, really, just by using a simple voltage from here. I'm driving this one here. Once this one flips over, I'm then taking out the voltages, say two lots of eight make 16, the equivalent of 18, 16, or one volt divided by 16, you'll give you the voltage that you're coming out with. Um, in fact, that's, I've just lied to you. That would be one volt divided by 127 times by 16. We give you a voltage for what you've actually got coming out. And so, yeah, we can then drive the threshold and we can change the threshold on the fly. Also, at the same time, we're coming out and we're driving, obviously, this digital stepper, which is driving these digital steppers, which are then, in turn, changing the, uh, the parameters, actually, on that drum and device. So hopefully, and as I said, this is the old Commodore way we're doing things. We're using one sound source only and we're just changing on the fly to make out like we've got a lot more going on than we really have. So I'm hoping that you're, well, this is the sort of thing that makes me excited. This is the sort of thing that I absolutely love doing and I hope that you have lots of fun doing these kinds of experiments and and obviously this is absolutely usable with inside uh, any sort of a uh, things you put together music wise. So anyway, I'm burbling as I usually do because I'm over hyped up that this has actually worked. <laughs> so thank you for watching and bye for now.